Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Frontier Precision Technology Webinar. My name is Weston Schneider, and I'll be your presenter during this informational session. We also have Steve Richter with on today's panel. This morning, we'll be exploring the Trimble V10 Imaging Rover, which represents a new era in geospatial data capture and deliverables. And also, as questions come up, uh, if you could just please key them into the chat window. We'll work through them at the end of the webinar. There will be a little bit of time left over. All right. <clears throat> During today's session, we'll be diving into the V10 technology and current applications for this new tool. The V10 is basically an integrated camera system that very accurately captures 360 degree panoramic images for documentation and measurement of the surrounding environment. So how does the V10 do it? Photogrammetry. Photogrammetry has been around for quite a while, so it's not new to our industry, and it is now really the backbone of Trimble's vision technology. The V10 allows us to quickly document the work area with 360 degree panoramic images. From there, we can either use the images as a quality control item and make sure that the survey data is correct, or take it a step further and begin to gather new geospatial information from the photos themselves. And finally, the new information can be exported to CAD or GIS platforms. Before breaking down the V10, I wanted to reflect on a common current survey workflow from today, where we are collecting point information in the field and in some cases exporting a simple CSV file, then importing the points in and beginning the process of cleaning up the project or even connecting the dots, relying on the field notes all along the way to verify what the field technician saw and did that day. The new workflow is very similar, except that a large volume of data is captured with every panorama. Mission planning to achieve the desired accuracy is important. For those of you familiar with scanning, you'll find some parallels in these concepts. The center image shows the relationship of the photo stations to each other as well as the area of interest. The lower left shows a panorama captured in Trimble Access. Imagine how much easier it is to connect the dots when you can see what the field worker actually saw. The 30% efficiency gain number is interesting. The number actually came from one of Trimble's focus groups. While this certainly is not a blanket statement and the results will vary, it is interesting to think about the Trimble V10 solution providing this kind of efficiency gain when, when we're providing all these new deliverables. All right, let's take a look at the guts of the V10. It has 12 calibrated cameras with a combined 60 megapixels, as well as multiple sensors that help establish the image locations. Trimble did tell us that they proved out the 2 meter drop rating of the instrument, however it was slightly unintentional. Here we see the plan view of what the camera will see with the field technician in the middle and illustrates the camera coverage. The outer panorama reflects the seven cameras facing outward for 360 degrees of vision and the inner panorama reflects the five downward facing cameras for 210 degrees of vision. This is a profile view of the same coverage area. You can see the optimal distance to target is in the 50 to 60 foot range I'll be going into the accuracies of the system here shortly. Let's take a minute to look over the components of the Trimble V10. It can include, but does not necessarily have to include, your position sensor, like a GNSS receiver or total station target. But basically, we have the V10 itself, 
the controller running Trimble Access Field Software, the power rod, which utilizes actually two of the R10 GNSS lithium-ion batteries, which can be hot swapped as needed, and then finally Trimble Business Center for processing the geospatial information. Here we are displaying each possible field solution. The primary form of collection is done using the Trimble tablet controller. However, Trimble has recently added the TSC3 to the mix. But with the larger screen on the tablet, you simply have more real estate for viewing the intended panorama. The V10 works in concert with other sensors like the R-Series GNSS receivers or 360-degree robotic targets for an integrated solution. But the V10 can be operated standalone as well and observe the photo stations either before or after the control points are set. So how does it work? We start by capturing the panoramas in the field using Trimble Access. We then drag and drop the data into Trimble Business Center for processing. From there, we can measure the same object in two or more photos from TBC to create positions. And based on how well the intended object is covered, this can be an automated process. And finally, we would pre prepare the deliverables in TBC from the positions. And of course, the million dollar question, how accurate is it? The V10 will achieve one centimeter for every 10 meters to the object of interest. So with that said, at 20 meters, you would see roughly two centimeters. At 30 meters, you would see three centimeters, and so on down the line. The V10 can achieve highly accurate positions using best practices. The geospatial concepts familiar to survey, photogrammetry, and GIS apply here. If you can see it in the panoramas, you can measure it. Here are some of the items that will affect the system's accuracy like the distance and angle to the object, or your distance between and number of photo stations, along with the distribution of tie points and control. The V10 works with Trimble Access Field software. The key takeaway here is that if you know how to measure points and know how to capture a panorama, it will happen automatically with a checkbox checked you see in the picture. The V10 processing concepts are built on the same concepts used for Trimble Vision and Trimble UX5 unmanned aerial systems. If you are familiar with these workflows, you are familiar with the V10 workflows. TBC also offers automatic, manual, or combined methods of adjusting your V10 geospatial data. Here are the methods I just had described. Based on how well tie points are spread out on your site, and how large a site you are currently trying to process will determine the length of time TBC will take to adjust the data set. So all these terms I'm throwing around, what is a photo station? This is the location of the imaging sensor like the V10 when it collects the panoramic information. It will usually have coordinates assigned so it is relative to real world data. This is a brief example of how to achieve the specified level of accuracy on an object and what to expect when you try to measure an object outside of the optimal intersection areas. Here is what is referred to as a zigzag pattern when using the V10. This is going to be the most accurate method, but not necessary for everyday collection. All right, here are these uh, terms that are readily used when taking the step into photogrammetry. You can consider a tie point like a backsight. They will let us tie or link our photo stations together and are very important. In some situations, tie points can be as equally important as control points are. Checkpoints are used to verify that a photo station adjustment was done correctly and accurately. And any new measurement that is taken from the photo is referred to as an object point. You can see that in this image we were doing a survey of a parking lot and placed a few random tie points via these checkerboard targets on the building behind this especially chipper individual. Checkpoints can be measured using the integrated GNSS receiver, total station target, or even using the reflectorless technology in the instrument. DR can be an effective tool. 
All right. Once we import the data, we'll perform an adjustment based on the image positions, sensor data, and tie points. Here we see the raw data and the results of the adjustment. The concept you see here is what we call a photo observable check shot. They are the positions in yellow. We observe these points using an R10 GNSS receiver. The observations were not used at any point during the adjustment. Once the adjustment is complete, the pictures should move to match the points. We know immediately that the adjustment is successful because we know where in the field we made the GNSS observations. They wanted a redundant check of the results, so they had previously observed this target with direct reflex using a Trimble VX spatial station. After adjusting the data from the V10 imaging rover, you measure the target using the measure photo points command in Trimble Business Center. You then inverse between the two values as a comparison. This is what will give you your project-based accuracy statement and confidence level as you begin to measure other points in the photo stations. Object points can be anything and everything on your site. The only requirement is that it needs to be something that can be seen from more than one of the photo stations to derive the coordinate. Here are a few of the image views from TBC. The bottom right image is showing that where you click, you get a coordinate. This is an example of the measurement tool within TBC. It also shows the ability to open multiple station views to ensure the accuracy of the intended object point. Depending on the distance to the object of interest, you will be able to zoom to find the best magnification level. You will truly be amazed at how easy the V10 is to use in the field. With proper site planning, it can enhance virtually every survey site to date. I can't underestimate the value of the site visualization piece. The V10 really creates a connection between the field and the office. This solution is built on familiar concepts that users already know and expect from Trimble today. Seamless download, short learning curve, works with existing Trimble R-series GNSS receivers, and VX S-series robotic systems. In this case, a picture really is worth a thousand points. For most customers, avoiding a site revisit is the difference between profit and loss. This notion will ring true with many of you in the audience today. Often our customers' clients will ask for an additional deliverable after the initial project delivery. The ability to fulfill this request from existing data represents high value. Here are just a few of the applications that the V10 is focused on today. Everything from the land surveying, GIS industries, to oil and gas, and accident reconstruction and investigation. With new federal guidelines, fast, easy, and of course safe collection of ADA ramps is a priority in many, if not all, of our states. This will allow for not only the measurement, but also the archiving of the condition of the ramp at the time of collection. I mentioned oil and gas, since that is a large part of our lives this day and age. And also another area where federal guidelines can dictate the scope of the project. The V10 can be used as early on as the planning stages, all the way to an as-built of the finished plan itself. And with the ever-changing landscape of the mining world, this tool can allow for safe measuring of dangerous areas to gain quick volume calculations on a day-by-day -day basis. The important point here is that besides working standalone, Trimble Vision is now also available for GNSS users and at the rod. More than that, it is truly expands the capability of the Trimble Vision. Okay, with that, I would like to just open it up to see if anybody does have any questions relating to what we were covering. Um, if there is a specific question, you can sure post it. Um, if there's a follow-up question, you're more than welcome to contact us directly, and we can follow up with you at that point. Thanks, Wes. I see one of the questions here. Um, in your presentation, you had mentioned that it works with the existing Trimble R series. Does that mean it will work with the R8 series of uh, receivers, but uh, or only just the R10? That is a great question. Um, initially, when the V10 was released, it was a tablet and R10 only capable system. Um, with the newest releases of the Access software, 
and firmware for the V10. It can now be utilized with existing R8 GNSS receivers and the TSC3 controllers. Um, also, can the data be used with Trimble Visual Statement? That is actually a good question as well. And that one I am not too sure on uh, with the current data flow. So I can sure look into that. And it looks like that was um, related. I will get that over to him. Yeah, we have a name here uh, on that. So we'll, we'll uh, address that uh, answer directly to, um, to the person who asked it. Very good. Uh, also keep in mind that we will record this webinar. It will be put up on our blog site here in the next couple of days and um, um, we will send out a notification on our blog uh, for that. So those of you that are signed up to receive that notification, you will receive it uh, here in the next couple of days and, uh, and like I said, we will record this and put it up there. Uh, a couple other questions uh, coming in here. Uh, if you are using the system without a position sensor, so uh, robotic or, uh, uh, or GPS, uh, is there a set number of points or how many points do you need to tie it to uh, the known coordinate system after the fact? Um, so if you go ahead and, and run the V10 and, and hit existing control, how many control points are required? Sure. Um, boy, another good question. <laughs> um, it really is going to depend on uh, more so the scope of the, the project or the object of interest that you're shooting to. Um, you're going to have similar triangulation. So, I mean, when we're dealing with a, an existing coordinate system, we're going to probably try and keep it to that minimum of uh, three control points that you have known coordinates on probably would be excellent. We might be able to go down to two. But, again, um, I think you're going to more so be related to uh, the scope of where you're trying to grab as far as your object points. Uh, another question here is once the data is processed in TBC, how is the data used by a designer? You know, the surveyor that's doing the work may have TBC, but the end users may not have TBC. Most likely will not have TBC. Correct. Um, if the end user um, is kind of your, your goal, there are several different paths you can take. For example, there are some exports to uh, the Google Earth views uh, as one, so the end user can easily be able to view uh, just the imagery at that point. Um, you do also have your uh, SketchUp capabilities too. And actually one of the slides that was demonstrating some of the um, 3D modeling capabilities of that bridge structure, that was uh, designed through once was, was new as uh, Google SketchUp, is now your Trimble SketchUp platform. And then sent over as a viewable, there's uh, free viewers for that as well. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions coming in. Uh, thanks again, Wes. And uh, like I said, I do appreciate everybody being on today's webinar. We will have this recorded and put up on our blog site, like I had mentioned, in a couple of days. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, everybody enjoyed uh, the time. Uh, one other question, is there a limit to how many photo stations can be adjusted? Excellent. All right. That question actually is going to be relative to the computer doing the processing. Um, I did. Uh, I have seen during our training sessions and done myself a processing of, uh, boy, I think that session was over 32 photo stations. Uh, expect that to take an extremely long time. Um, one recommendation was to shave it down to processing maybe, um, you know, 10 to 15 photo stations at a time and bringing it in as groups. That way you do have smaller processing time frames. Um, it definitely, and the other part of it too was whether or not it's an automatic adjustment or if you are also taking into account uh, manual tie points. So that's where we had a target or those checkerboard targets um, that you could click on and tell it that those are known targets just like a backside. Uh, and do a part of it manually first and then automatic after that and that will speed up the processing quite a bit but um, if you're going to start getting up into larger scenes like 50 plus stations you definitely will start breaking those down into probably like I said 12 to 15 stations for processing. So just to kind of make sure I understand that so the software doesn't necessarily have a limitation it's just going to be based on the computer's 
ability to process all those photo stations, but the recommendation is to have 10 to 15 stations in a project at a time. Is that what you were saying? Uh, that, is, that is correct for processing, yes. Okay. Uh, another question here, uh, again a few more. Um, talked about the possibility of using this for a mining application. Is it a viable option for accurate stockpile measurements? Yes, very good. Actually, um, we do have some sample data on those, especially from Trimble, too. Um, it's going to depend on the level of accuracy that you're requiring. For example, that one mine site that we used in the presentation, um, we were able to pull structures out of that, or Trimble was, and do the processing for points. I think at those distances where they were pulling it and creating the volumes and surfaces in TBC, they were still within their... Uh, I believe it was a tenth to a tenth and a half um, level of accuracy or statement. And again, it, it will rely on how far the V10 sensor was when you collected those images. So they were down at the, the base of that particular mine site doing one of the wall faces. Um, and the further out it is, the less accurate it becomes. Um, but it is viable for, you need a, a volume calculation for a pile. Um, and you're able to get close enough to it, and you have targets that you can manually tie your, you know, your, your project together on um, for a stockpile, I definitely think it would be accurate enough. How about extracting points in a sample grid from the photos uh, themselves? Can you do that? That, <laughs> yeah, that one actually is a really good question as well. The, um, as of right now, Trimble Business Center cannot do that, but if you do remember from, um, from towards the end of the slide, a lot of the rudimentary um, math and the, the technology they're using for pulling out the data sets derives from Vision, which includes Trimble's UAS solution, like the UX5. Um, that does have some of those capabilities in there for extracting from photos, um, you know, point groups. So as of right now, Trimble Business Center will not do that for uh, the V10, but um, they have said that that is a goal. How about working in uh, low light conditions, dark locations? Is there any sort of lighting solution? Um, so right now, the only lighting solution would be one artificial that you would have to actually bring into the site. I would say that that would be one of the, um, the main limitations for a camera-based sensor system like this, is that you do need to be able to see the object to take measurements on. So uh, for an example, I guess one that would come to mind would be if there was a, an accident uh, at night and you wanted to go in to map that out, you would have to probably have some type of floodlights on the scene to give it that artificial light in order to see the object to take a measurement to it. Okay, that looks like all the questions. Um, unless there are any more last-minute questions. Um, uh, here's another one. So you're saying point cloud generation is possible. Uh, HDR cameras, are the shutters still firing consecutively and not instantaneous? Uh, correct. Um, the V10 currently is um, not instantaneous. It does cycle through and um, take one, basically, the photos will still happen very, very quickly, but it is actually taking uh, one photo at a time throughout the course of the 360 photos. That is one of the reasons why you saw each of the images when we were using the sensors with GNSS or a robotic targeting system, that we're using the bipod with those because we want to be holding it still um, in order to do that. Like I mentioned, though, when you do measure a point, it then will take the photos, and it is a we'll just say a five second process. It will display the panorama first and then it'll prompt you if you want to keep it or you can reobserve it, say if a vehicle drove through uh, your line of sight while you're trying to do an intersection. It allows you to um, reobserve or take that photo then at that point. So currently it does not do an instantaneous. Okay, I think that'll wrap it up. We got uh, 30 minutes done on today's webinar. We wanted to try to keep it at a very short time frame for everybody's uh, convenience. So again, I do thank everybody's participation. Great questions. Um, again, look for the recording in a couple of days.
Thanks, Wes. And uh, again, uh, thank you for attending today's webinar. Thank you again. Have a good day.